What's cooking, sapiens? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Arham and I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of Oslo in Norway. So this video is going to be an extension of the last video where I talked about how I got into medicine or my journey to medicine in Norway and also where I shared how I studied for my exams in the last year of college here in Norway. In this video, I'll be answering some of the questions that you guys have sent me on my Instagram. So yeah, without any further ado, let's just dive straight into it. The first question is by Razan Shadid and she asks, was I working alongside going to college and did I have any free time? Uh, and the answer is yes, I was working. I was working at this uh, local retail store in Norway, which is called Kiwi. And here I worked for about three years. Uh, so I would work basically on alternate weekends. I would work one Saturday and then the next Saturday would be off. So one Saturday work, next Saturday off. However, in the summer vacations, I would actually work like two to three weeks almost full time and I would then save up that money uh, to for, for like later. The next question is by Ritika Jaswal and she asks how to be disciplined without it affecting your free time, hobbies and mental health. Now this is a question that I actually get asked quite often and the way I think about this is that I mean, there's a general misconception where people think that if you have to be disciplined, then you basically have to be a workaholic and be extremely disciplined. And hence, this might end up um, really affecting your mental health or your, your hobbies and your free time. That's the way a lot of people think about it, right? However, my take on, them, on this is that uh, you want to be disciplined in order to have a reasonably good amount of leisure time or in order to save time for your hobbies. So I think of um, discipline as a prerequisite to having good mental health. So when you have discipline and you have basically uh, done everything that you had to do before your leisure, times, leisure time starts, then you basically do not have to worry about any work in your free time. So you end up having much more freedom and you end up having a lot of that mental space um, completely dedicated to your free time during that leisure time. So you don't have to worry about work when you're, when you're just having fun. So that's kind of the way I think about it. So in short, I like to think about discipline as, as the prerequisite and more free time and better mental health as a consequence of that. The next question is by Zena Mohammed who asks, how did I manage or how did you manage to get A stars in every subject in college? And does one need A stars in every subject to get into medicine at the University of Oslo uh, in Norway? Firstly, I did not have A stars in every single subject in college because I, as I already mentioned, I was really a chimp during the first two years of high school. I was a lazy, uh, lazy guy or a lazy sapien. So I did not have A stars in every single subject. However, yes, once I started to work really hard in the third year of high school, in the last year of my college, uh, I did manage to score uh, A stars in every single subject. And the way I did this was basically by simply following uh, the diet or the DIET method, which I have discussed previously in detail in one of my previous videos. Um, the idea is that, okay, firstly, you need to define, secondly, identify, thirdly, enhance, and T stands for Tilbakimelin, which means feedback. So firstly, you need to define your goal. For example, medicine. Secondly, you want to identify the GPA requirements for that goal so that you have this crystal clear number in your head uh, which you need to work for. Thirdly, you need to enhance your learning or the way you study by using effective studying techniques such as active recall and spaced repetition. And lastly, you need to ask for constant feedback from the teachers and you don't really put them on your team. So that's basically the way I, um, I managed all this in high school. And this, I think this was the major reason behind my success, if I'm allowed to say so. The next question is by Catalina Binemilis, and she asks, can you talk about the language requirements? So I will be making a complete video on this in the coming days. Uh, but in short, um, the language requirement is called the B2 level of proficiency. So Norwegian language proficiency uh, or like generally European language proficiencies as issued by the Council of Europe is grouped or divided into, into I think six parts A1, A2, B1, B2 and C1, C2 whereby C2 is the highest and A1 is the lowest proficiency level and you need to uh, take your exams in the, in the Norwegian language exams and uh, achieve the B1 or sorry the B2 level of um, proficiency in order to be eligible to apply for higher medicine or higher education here in Norway for example medicine. Alright the next question is by Fatima ZMX. 
how did you schedule or prepare for your final exams and i've already answered this in in detail in my previous video so we can kindly check that out uh, the next question is by um rafa xxxl how to know if medicine is something for you now this is a really hard question <laughs> to be very honest uh now most people like to say that okay if you like working with people and if you are, are interested in biology then you should go for medicine but i think that's a bit incomplete i would like to add that if you are a really resilient person who who is always determined and needs and knows how to work hard for his goals or his or, or his dreams then i think medicine is going to be the right thing for you because in my humble opinion medicine requires a lot of resilience you need to really you know work hard even when you don't feel like doing so and that is the main thing that you need you don't have to be a genius you don't have to be an extremely intelligent guy or an, an extremely intelligent sapien in order to become a doctor all you need is the resilience and the power the willpower to work to put in the work and effort even when you don't feel like doing so so if you feel that you have these requirements or abilities uh like if you are interested in biology if you like having contact with new people all the time and also if you are a resilient sapien then i think you should have then medicine should definitely suit you all right the next question is by christopher christopher liam and he asks how did you prepare for your exams and i've already answered that uh, referring to my last video uh, you can kindly check that out and the next question is from kavya karu naharan and she asks how did you study for chemistry and maths uh, in college and again there's nothing there's no rocket science i basically did as many uh, um, questions and as possible in order to you know really practice these two subjects uh, because that is also a form for active recall and you know just testing yourself consistently you know really drilling those questions uh, into your brain and make sure that the questions that you practice are a combination of the questions that are from the book or in the chapters and secondly the questions which have previously appeared in the exam so past paper questions if you are if you can practice those enough then i think you should should be good in chemistry and maths the next question is by camille panoride and she asks uh come to investing with them all uh that means did i get into medicine right after college or did i have to retake any exams privately in order to improve my gpa for medicine here in oslo and the answer is yes i uh, got into medicine right after high school so i did not have to take any subjects or exams retake any exams uh privately to improve my gpa so i think i was lucky enough to not go through that um procedure and save time but if you have to do that then that that's completely fine by all means do go for it it's a great opportunity for everybody all right the next question is by ritika jaswal again and she asks uh which is which one is more practical to choose in order to get into medicine uh, a better or the best high school in or the best college or an average college uh and i think in my opinion i think going for if i was in that situation i would really go for an average college because in the best colleges there is much more competition because most people are hard hard working and are really smart so there is a lot of competition in order to get good grades however in the average schools uh the competition is much less so the chance of you uh, standing out and you know really smashing those results is much higher that's my opinion and that's based and based on my uh first hand experience so i would really choose an average high school if i had to Uh, because that's what I actually did, and that's my experience, and that's where I recommend to everybody. The next question is by Maruch, and she asks: extra curriculars that you think could definitely boost your CV and make you stand out uh, when you want to study medicine in Oslo. Well, the answer is that you don't actually need any extra curriculars or anything to boost your CV because uh, the way that medicine here in Oslo works is that you basically get into medicine if you have a high enough GPA if no then you basically have to retake your exams and improve your GPA uh, they don't really look at your extracurriculars or anything like that so all you need is that is to fulfill the GPA requirements the next question is do you need to have a certain GPA requirement in order to get into medicine in Norway the answer is yes in, you must fulfill the GPA requirement and i don't remember the exact number uh but i will post the link to the university of the of oslo and you can simply check the number over there i think it's around 60.2 or 6.2 uh for this year i think 
Uh, I will post the link down below in the, in, the, in the description box. The next question is by Ikra Sid and she asks, is there a specific entrance exam and do you need extracurriculars? The answer is no, there is no uh, entrance exam and you don't, you don't need to have any extracurriculars. All you need to do is to fulfill the GPA or the merit requirements in order to be eligible to apply or get into medicine here in Norway. So the next question is by Esra Al Ahmed and she asks, do you need six in every subject in order to get into medicine? <clears throat> the answer is no, you don't because high school in Norway uh, you can actually collect four extra points in high school in Norway uh, simply by taking science subjects. So by taking physics, chemistry, maths, um, biology, you get you can achieve four extra points. So let's say you have um, five point uh, a GPA of five point six, right? So simp and that means that if your grade of if or if your grade average was five point six, then that your your total GPA would be five point six plus zero point four because you had the science subjects. So you end up with 6.0 in your final GPA simply because you had those four extra points. Now Manoj asks, what is the score that you need to get into medicine in Norway? And secondly, what are the study techniques that you use in high school to get into medicine here in Norway? Um, I've already answered those. Um, for the study techniques in high school, check out my last video where I talk about how I studied for my exams in college. And secondly, I don't remember the exact score of the GPA requirement, so I will post the link to the official website in the description box below. All right, the next question is, is it possible to get into medicine if you are bad at maths? Uh, yes, it is definitely possible because you don't need to have a six or an A star in mathematics. Uh, as I've said previously, <clears throat> all you need is to make sure that, make sure that you have good enough grades in all your subjects combined so let's say you have a five or a four in maths right uh, but if you have six or a stars in all your other subjects then they will compensate for your four in maths uh, in, so your total gpa would still be um would still match the gpa requirements to get into medicine in norway so you can get into medicine if you're bad in maths no worries all right last one so sadia asks as somebody who knows no norwegian at all but decides to learn the language for a year would i be able to join university in norway and actually understand what is taught in english, what is taught in the class and secondly are you aware of the great requirements if i'm doing a levels and want to apply medicine in norway uh, firstly yes it is definitely possible my sister that's exactly what she did so she completed her a levels in pakistan and then came to norway learned the norwegian language passed her language requirement exam and then basically she got into medicine in norway because she had a good enough gpa from uh, her a levels uh, and yeah it went completely fine if you have cleared your norwegian language exam then that essentially does mean that you are qualified to study medicine or any other course in norwegian because then you have developed that uh, proficiency level so that should not be a problem and the exact a level grade requirements i'll be making a complete video in detail about this on how you can convert your a level grades into the norwegian gpa system in order to get into medicine but for now i think the gpa of the, of the grade requirements from a level a levels is around uh, two a stars and one a and the subjects that you, you must have are chemistry a levels physics a levels and maths uh, either a level maths or as level mathematics all right that's a wrap for today sapiens Thank you for watching and make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't done that already. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Peace.